Hello, Marvel fans. We're back here again at The Harsh Truth, this time with my hetero life mate, Jeremy Wollner, right here. You can see his Twitter and my Twitter handles up on the screen. Today, as you can tell, spoiler discussion, look down there, all about Spider-Man Far From Home. Boy, what a movie. That's pretty good. Boy, what a movie. I, I, yeah, that's all I had to say. It was a great, overall, it was a great follow-up to Endgame. It was very good. Great follow-up to Endgame. It did feel like a nice, you know. I do want to say this. I do want to say one thing again. I want to remind anybody who watches this channel: we do not skirt spoilers. This is a spoiler discussion. We are going to be talking about things that happen in the movie, things that are coming, big things that happened and didn't happen in the movie. So if you have not seen the movie, put this in your watch later list. Go out, check out Spider-Man: Far From Home, then come back and give the video a watch and a like. Hopefully, you'll like it. First things first. Let's go over a little bit about these Endgame editions because they it does kind of lead into Spider-Man: Far From Home. Now, full disclosure to everybody watching, I have not seen the additional stuff to Endgame yet. I'll get to it eventually in the next week or so. Jeremy has, and I feel like it merits some discussion. So, what kind of stuff was actually attached to Endgame in the last week or so? Well, um, first off, they did a real nice uh, edition for Stan Lee and all of his cameos and. You know, how the same thing I always hear him say is that he feels like he's like the luckiest guy in the world to be a part of this. And it's, I'm sure it's it's amazing to see something like that blow up to what it was. And it's like, he's, you know, he feels good about that. So, that, I mean, that was the first nice thing that, you know, of course, across the screen, it's we love you 3,000 stands. You know, it was a nice little send off. Um, and the, the the next thing they have is, like, of course, he's talking all these scenes that, you know, they take out. He's like, yeah, I know the movie's getting longer. Holy really crap. But there's this one I wanted to lead in, and it was just it was just a scene of like a building on fire, and you know, the, the firefighters are talking. They see this thing fly across, and it's uh, it's Hulk. He goes into the building, picks up all the people, like a big satellite dish on top, and just scoops them out. And he kind of talks talks to everybody on the ground, like yeah, good job, man, high five, whatever. And he gets a he gets a call, and he's like, Steve, Steve who? And it cuts out. So I'm assuming that's. Steve Rogers. <laughs> yeah, it's Steve Rogers. So I'm like, I, I didn't know. I'm like, maybe I just don't remember. I'm like, did you ever know his name? Or did you know him as Captain America? Or has it been too long? But it was a nice, I mean, it didn't need to be, you know, in there. It was just, I guess it was just nice to know that, you know, since Cap were running like that support group, Widow's just kind of sold on to everything. Tony went off and did his own thing. It's like, well, we know Hulk's been out there still trying to save people, which is nice. So. And, and it wasn't mad that it wasn't in the movie. It just cuts right to them talking to him. But. And it's kind of nice to see him still. He was still in, like, you know, half banner, half Hulk mode. He wasn't just, like, full on, you know. And then they had, like, the first. It's, like, what could have been an end credit scene, you know, just at the next movie for uh, Spider Man. It was, like, the first scene where uh, Nick Fury is in. Uh... What's the fucking name? Maria Hill. Maria Hill. I'm like, I said Hill. I can't think of her first name. They're going, and I see. I was confused of what this movie was going to be about. And they said this, they're in Mexico, and they're talking about. Uh, then the locals said this cyclone had a face, and because she's like, we're not here to chase the weather. So I'm like, so is it a dust storm? It had a face? Is this Sandman in Mysterio? Because then, and then, of course, they find Mysterio, he's like, who are you guys? And then the big cycl the cyclone they mentioned comes up, and he's like, you don't part of this. And then Spider Man, far from home. <laughs> Like, well, you, you could have put that in there, but I guess for Endgame, if you just want to just say, nah, this is the Endgame. Well, I if actually, need a scene, I like the fact that there was no end credit scene or post credit scene in Endgame, because there is there is so much finality to that movie anyway. That's what I mean. And it's it was not, okay. And look, I mean, anybody who's a real Marvel fan or who even reads some of the trades, like Hollywood Reporter or Variety or something like that, knows that there's, you know, Black Panthers now in, they're pushing the production of Black Panther now. As in, they're aggressively going after it now. Ryan Coogler, I know, is really hitting hard on the script. It's something I, I watched earlier today on YouTube. Uh, Doctor Strange 2 is, is getting to the point where they're getting pretty heavy pre-production on that. They've, they're actually, I think they're filming the Black Widow movie now. Yeah. So it's not about. like you don't know this stuff isn't coming. And then you have all the stuff they're doing. They're going to end up doing on the Disney streaming site, the WandaVision, uh, Falcon, and Winter Soldier, and whatever other stuff they're doing to, oh, kind of, to replace everything that they had on Netflix. But... Yeah, so it's not like we didn't know something else was coming. So I was okay with not getting a post credit scene after Endgame because there was finality. It's like that—that that is the end of the—that was the end of the Infinity Saga, 
as it, it, as it became known. And I was like, that was fitting. It's okay. And Because part of me was like, damn it, I want to know what comes next. Give me a hint. Give me anything. Just give me a taste. Like, I'm, like, I'm like that crack fiend that just wants a taste until the next time. But uh, but I but especially in the hours afterwards, I kind of understood. I was like, yeah, you're 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 closing this chapter on the MCU. You needed a little bit of you needed to stop that that break right there. But I didn't, uh, I didn't know Spider-Man was coming next, so that would have been a cool like, oh, so we're gonna do that now. So seeing all the trailers already for Spider-Man and seeing that that was what was ready for him, I was like, I'd already seen that scene. I'm like. Well, then what was the point of it? I don't know. Well, that was the other thing is by the time Endgame had come out, they were already, I think, most of the way or even done with principal photography on Spy on Far From Home. Yeah. On this movie, so a post credit scene would have been out of the you know out of the realm of possibility. That was kind of what I expected to see going into the movie, but whatever, I was okay with it. So all that stuff leads. So that scene, the cut scene, is basically the very first scene for Spider Man Far From Home, where we get our introduction to Mysterio. Now. Now we get, let's talk about the plot of the, of the movie first. Mysterio is this guy who pops up. He claims to be from another Earth. Uh, a multiverse. A multiverse. I was like, no wait, is that a joke? We'll or... get to that in a second. <laughs> because I'm like, wait, that wait, whole wait. thing had me really worried. <laughs> that whole that whole multiverse angle had me really worried when that came out. But... Well, because they did mention Prowler, right? So there is the hint that Miles Morales is out there. Well, they mention a lot of stuff that never comes to me. I'm just saying, if that was going to be the second, second nail is for, hey, is there a multiverse for real? I'm like, well, one of the fun things about the MCU is they'll, they'll pepper in these little references here, and you don't know if it's fan service or if it's or if it's the sign of something to come. Yeah. Because I remember in uh, I think it was Iron Man two. At the towards the end of the movie, when uh, Nick Fury and him meet up, and they're talking about, do you is he going to be a part of the Avengers or not? Yeah. And they're they're in that room, and it's got like the TV screens that have uh, like what happened in the Incredible Hulk, Edward Norton's Hulk, mm-hmm. and some stuff like that going in the background. They had different sites in the map pinpointed, and one of those things was a spot in Africa that everybody was freaking out about at the time, saying, "Oh my God, that's proof that Black Panther's coming." I'm like, "Well, it's a it's a little nugget. What it means, who the hell knows?" Yeah, because they made another reference to uh, Namor or the Submariner, whichever one that is in the MCU that's like Aquaman. They made another reference to that in this movie. Yeah. I forget exactly how the reference goes. I just saw the movie a few hours ago for the first time. I'm going to have to go back and, and see it again to reabsorb some of the exact dialogue. But that, that does make mention to somebody who works and lives underwater or something like that. I forget exactly what the reference was. Yeah. But is it just a nugget that is fan service, or is it a sign of something to come? I think they do want to do something with, with Namor. Not, not that they wouldn't or couldn't. I mean, I'm sure... It's not something they could do. But, you know, once again, it's not... Kevin Feige's not known for just throwing stuff out there and saying, hey, just watch me because I'm the MCU. Kind of like what DC's been doing. One of the reasons why DC had to really... Had to pull back... Well, I mean, it, it, it matters because this is the reason why DC had to pull back and kind of say, hey, we need to... We need to get our footing first. Let's concentrate on what we're doing with the individual stuff and then we'll take shots and shares. But one of the things that was in this movie that they used was the elementals. And... Yeah. I'm on the fence as to whether I'm going to be annoyed at how they use them or not. So, for those of you who are watching this and have seen the movie, the whole thing is a ruse. The elementals don't really exist. Spoiler. They're all... Yes, yeah, spoiler. spoiler. See the bottom? Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> you didn't know about spoiler. Mysterio. <laughs> the elementals are used as... They're kind of... They're just a plot device. They're all holograms that are used by Mysterio to force Nick Fury and Spider-Man into this area where he can do what he wants to do. And I'm... And... As I was leaving the theater, I'm kind of like, the Elementals was really cool. I think it was really cool for Spider-Man to deal with, especially involving Mysterio. But I'm like, you kind of gave him the uh, the Mandarin treatment here. These are some really cool bad guy characters that you could have that you could have used over the course of even more than one movie. But you made them holograms, and so I'm getting that uh, I'm getting that drunken soccer fan guy that Ben Kingsley played in Iron Man three kind of feeling again. I feel like you really badly misused somebody who could have been a huge asset as far as your collection of villains are concerned in the MCU. What do you think about that? I mean, yeah. It, <clears throat> see, my, my problem was the whole time was like, I already know Mysterio is not a good, good guy. So, oh, yeah. But Anybody I, who's ever read a comic book or knows anything. Yeah, I know. I'm like, the whole time, I already knew that. So it's like, I'm trying to not watch it with that in mind, but all my... But still in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, well, I'm watching how it's played, even, you know, it's, it's, it's like, I know that, and he knows it, no one else does. And it's like, but, 
if you didn't know that and seeing it, like that would have been pretty cool. Like, I mean, that was a really cool, um, I guess, step into that. Like you said, to for even for Mysterio, it gives him how it it does help set up his whole you know his whole ruse. Whether you believe it or not, you know, and I feel kind of like uh, it's all it's all a bunch of bullshit. I'm still sad about this. Is there a multiverse or not? Like, they tell me he was telling the truth about that. Well, I was, because this multiverse stuff came out, and we'll go, we'll go to that little plot point real quick. He he comes in, and you have this little scene with them in the the bat cave, so to speak, the the Mysterio headquarters. Basement, yeah. And he starts giving, he starts going into this whole story. I'm from another universe. The elementals destroyed my my Earth, whatever. And I kind of was just like, uh, I. I the multiverse thing is just not good. I I could like I wasn't fond of the time travel aspect of Endgame either. Because time travel is such a God, it's such a half ass way to get around the the story constrictions to get to where you want it to go. But we're, we're talking about space magic and other aliens. Yeah. I mean whatever man, it's time travel. <laughs> but well, no, the way they did time travel made it a little bit easier to stomach. It wasn't time travel as much as it was we just had whatever, have, have quantum right universes mechanism. and whatever. Yeah. But so it wasn't kind of the same old crap. But I was still, I was like, eh, it's time travel. But this whole multiverse thing, I mean, they've got it going on right now in the CW stuff, in the Arrowverse, okay. and and I think even they, I think, are doing it okay. They kind of lean on it a little too much at times. It's like I would rather you just say that, you know. Kara, who plays who is the Supergirl, it just exists in their universe somehow instead of having them bounce back and forth between different universes and whatever. I'm like, it's it gets so convoluted and kind of confusing at times. I'm kind of, part of me just wants to switch my brain off and not listen to the to the dialogue and, and get it wrapped up in the story. I get kind of bored with it. So when they first did that too. what's that? Didn't flash that too or something. There was another one I think that did multiple. I swear there was one. Maybe it was Flash. In the CW? One. No. I swear there was someone else that was doing like a multiverse thing, and I'm like, well, I think DC and and Marvel have both used a multiverse at some point. In the comics. I'm sure because it's, you know. And I'm not as read up on the comics as I once was. I did, I had my comic book phase when I was a kid, but after that, I just kind of grew it. And I've gone back and done research into some of the stories and stuff since. But actually, going and buying a bunch of physical comic books now is not really what I do. But. But it's still, it's just the, the multiverse. It was like as soon as that news came out that that would probably be something that was in there, everybody kind of collectively went, "Uh, really?" It's like we just got done with this time travel nonsense in Endgame. Are you really gonna give us this multiverse crap? How did no one see the Miles Morales movie? Like, that was the whole point of it. Into the Spider Verse? Yeah. It's not canon though. Well, you know what? At least, at least they haven't announced it as canon yet. So. Well, not to. Who knows? That's why I was thinking how maybe it was going to be with this. I'm like, oh, that would be true. I don't know. I. I, I even question my own, like I said, knowing that Mysterio is not what he is. I'm like, I'll now, hold on to that one little nugget. Like, oh, tell me that. Now, in all fairness, I haven't seen him in the Spider-Verse yet. It, uh, it's on my queue over there in the TV right now on, on Netflix. <laughs> I saw it came out the other day, and the first thing I did was I put it in my watch list. I but I have not had a chance to sit and watch it yet. It's good. But you know, everybody says it's good. It's got killer reviews. A lot of people had their top five movies of last year. Some people had it like as their best film of last year. Oh, but I, I just haven't had time to sit and watch it. I'm eager to, but I want to. I just haven't fair. had time. But I've never heard anything about it being canon with the stuff that we know in the MCU. So no, those characters are canon. Kind of like a new Spider Pig existed, like as a thing, and I'm like, oh, cool, he's in this movie, so I know that's a thing. I know these other ones are in it, like Spider Gwen, uh, the different Peter Parkers, and uh, some of them I didn't know, like the next Spider Man and the uh, Noir Spider Man. It was nice to see it expand more than just what I even had heard about. So they yeah. kind of threw away the elementals, in my opinion. Uh, I, just, the setup. I got over that because, I, well, I got over it the moment because I'm like, well, I know this movie's still got a lot left, so I want to see what goes on. So we get to the scene. They're they're in uh, London, they're not in London at the time. They're in uh, where were they? When they had the big fight with the elementals. Krog. Yeah. yeah Krog. Krog, Czech Republic. And they had the big fight in Italy. When they went for it. Yeah, right. Yeah, then the frog. Yeah. So they had the big fight with the big elemental, the, the fire element, and of course it all goes their way. And I'm thinking to myself already, I'm like, we're 15 minutes into this movie. We didn't kill the bad guy yet. I was like, there's, there's a whole lot more coming. It did telegraph a little bit of the stuff in this movie, I thought. 
it, it, like it, it did seem a little quick. quick. I like, mean, I mean, for one, there is no. I don't think there's ever been a time that I can remember anyway where, where Mysterio and Spider-Man have ever worked together for any common goal. Well, like, maybe there's something in the comics I'm not aware of, and if you're a comic book nut out there, by all means, go to the comments and point out to me where I'm wrong. But, but I, I cannot remember. I mean, there's there's been no time where Batman and Joker have worked together that I can think of either. So, so I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, unless you're making an effort to make Mysterio an anti-hero, there's, having him be even somewhere close to a good guy at the beginning of this movie is kind of odd. I didn't really know where it was all going. It did feel a little weird, because I'm like, again, still, I'm trying not to let that stop me from, like, knowing what was going on. I'm like, it just seems really off, and it does seem, like, kind of quick that he's all of a sudden, like, Peter's, like, best friend. Yeah. But it is riding off of Endgame, where it's like, he's not probably feeling the best right now. After all that shit just happened, and now he's being thrown back into it and expected to just... To be, the, to be the next Tony Stark. Yeah, to be like the next one. The I mean, he even asked him, like, what about Thor? What about Doctor Strange? What about everybody else? Why is it me? You know, he kind of asked himself why. Like, why, why, why is it me doing this? And they all just expect him to be like that because Tony kind of did choose him. And then when he finally gets exposed, basically, as just being a hack, he ends up, you end up finding out that he is the one who created Barf. <laughs> For for Tony Stark, the augmented react the Damn it, Tony. Uh, what, what was I forget, what, I forget the, the uh, what it was now. biorhythm augmented reality framing something like that did I get it right got I hope I got it right a, um, bio, oh, you're right bio augmented bio yeah, a lot of big words that people who are not scientists Tony has a lot of acronyms like, but Tony's smart yeah it even says that <laughs> yeah. Especially in Edith. We'll talk about Edith in a minute. Because okay. I thought that was very Tony Stark. <laughs> of course. But you end up finding out that he is actually a Tony Stark employee whose name is uh, Quinn? Quentin? Quentin. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... So he helped him create Barf, and he's pissed off that he gave it a bad name, and he turned it into his own little therapy Dan thing. Joke, man, Tony Stark. <laughs> and he ends up getting fired, apparently by Stark. But it would have been it would have been cool to have seen at least while he's narrating it to 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 uh, to these people in his group yeah. to have seen like in the background of his narration, yeah. seeing Stark actually saying, "Hey, dude, you're out of here. You're fired. You're too much of a kook." But, but you kind of get it. it. It's kind of it's something that's been done in the movies a lot. Oh, he. Fired me, so now I'm the bad guy. Yeah, it's Office been done. Space. It's been done. Yeah, <laughs> <Office> space. <laughs> he wants a stapler back. And that was a going away present. So you find out what his motivation really is, and then of course it hits you. It hits what? It hits you exactly the way you figured we could hit it. He's actually the bad guy, and you get it. Now, some of the people that were that surrounded him was odd. I because I remember the first time I looked at the, the bald guy with glasses. Yeah, that was, I was just like, is that is that him? Because I remember him from the first Iron Man. Yeah, because it still had a scene with, with that. Um, what's his name? Like, yeah, Obadiah Stane, yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's he's like he's he's about about this thing in a cave, man. He's like, what's, what's, what's your deal? Yeah, so it, it makes sense why these people are there. He picked this guy because, you know, whatever. He was he used to work for Stark Industries, and now this person used to work for Stark Industries. And so you got a bunch of people that were pissed off at Stark. Oh, like, they wrong in some manner. Yeah, and I'm sure there was no shortage of people in the world that were pissed off at Stark for one reason or another. But, I mean... He just got a bunch of people who were pissed off at Stark and said, hey, come work for me. I'm every bit as smart as Tony Stark is, and I can build cool shit, and I don't have to work for the Avengers or anything. I can actually run this shit instead of being part of the superhero gang, and that appealed to them. Side note, uh, Bald Guy with the Glasses, you know who that is? The actor? Yeah. No. Or, or what else he's been in? More, I mean, I might be telling me, I don't know. He is the little kid with the glasses from uh, A Christmas Story. You put your eye out? Oh, thing. really? That's him. Uh. <laughs> Oh, I, 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 that's actually something I remember watching um, the uh, bonus features for the first Iron Man movie. His name Peter Peter Billings Billings something, like something like that, yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, that's, from, like that's if you him. say it and I see it now, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's him. I was just trying to explain that to my girlfriend as we were leaving. She goes, "Oh no shit." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. People are people will stay in the business for a I mean, while. I mean, think the only thing I ever saw him was he was like that lead elf in uh, an elf. The one in the or workshop with yeah. the whole crowd, like, yeah. oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a Christmas, Christmas movie, sure, why not? But, so you find out that it's all it's all nonsense, there's no multiverse, he's been lying to everybody. Don't lie to me, I'm still holding out. <laughs> God, I, I, honestly, you may want the multiverse. Maybe that's I think, a twist. Maybe I think it's is. a horrible idea. 
I think the multiverse is a bad idea. I don't know. Well, see, because the thing is, is the suit at the end, it almost kind of looked very reminiscent of the Miles Morales suit, so I'm like, eh. Well, the suits are always going to change from movie to movie. Well, but... I do, well, I do appreciate the thing about his suit, though, at the end, it looked just like it did in like, the very first comic. It actually had like, the web, uh, like, mm. the gliding thing, like the uh, webs. So that was, that was, for me, I was like, ooh, I'm seeing issue number one. That's really cool. At least he's got the webs on here. That was just cool. But, uh, yeah, so we, we finally figure out what's really going on. No multiverse. Fury has been lied to, which was clue number one. That something wasn't quite right. We'll get to that. When we get Don't ghost Nick Fury. <laughs> Don't ghost Nick Fury, damn it. <laughs> or your ass. <laughs> and so we finally find out that Mysterio is the main bad guy, and he has his own little purpose. Now, I thought it, it was when I got to this point, as we got farther on to exposing what he was all about and how he was doing what he was doing, I finally, I finally realized, I was like, yeah, we're still looking at one of those things where the villain doesn't quite live up to expectations. Because that's been one of the no one of the two big knocks on Marvel for me, is that outside of Loki, the individual story uh, bad guys have not quite been there. I like Obadiah Stane because I think, with the exception of the intellect, he was just brutally vicious enough to be a match for Tony Stark. Yeah. Especially as Tony Stark was becoming Iron Man before, made, he would, before he would achieve full Iron Man headspace and be really that guy. So I thought he was a good villain. Definitely not one that could carry through the MCU. I mean, there, there was just no, it's just stepping down. But but Definitely. for being that one thing that boosts Tony into becoming Iron Man, I thought it was great. And I've liked other villains. I mean, I love the Mandarin until he was fake. <laughs> it's like the, the Iron Man three wasn't great. But I love him. He was fake. This Fury one, was fake. while still not Loki, is my third favorite, well, fourth favorite villain in the MCU so far. I still think Thanos is on top. I like Loki. I like uh, who's the other ones I like? I like uh, Killmonger. And uh, who's the other one I like? I, I like Stan, but I don't know if I put him on top. Okay. Like I said, he was he was a great start. Okay, fair. But the reality is, if any one of the Avenger heroes like could, the could take Stain one on one, yeah. he's not somebody that all the Avengers need to band together to get. What about Ultron? Uh, Ultron, yeah, I'll put Ultron up there. I, that, 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 that was like the first big, we're like, whoa, okay, here we go. Well, that was the first one where you kind of realize that the Avengers have, you start to see their limits. And that's one of the things I think, that's why I think that movie is actually kind of, I know a lot of people kind of shit on that movie when it first came out. They were kind of like, eh, not as good as the first Avengers. But you got to remember, it wasn't meant to be the cumulative Avengers thing, the way that Endgame, or the way that oh, no. Infinity War and Endgame were the cumulative thing of all that was going on. It was just supposed to be something that pushes them along the path to the eventual face to face with Thanos. So it does expose them and give them perspectives. It gives you the beginning of that rift that would become a civil war that would carry on through the rest of the Infinity Saga, so it made sense. But, yeah, he, he didn't quite get there. I may change my mind. I may like him more upon multiple viewings. Yeah, I but he, he still didn't twice. quite get there for me. Uh, it held its own, I would say. It held its own. I, well, like I said, I'm just glad there's no multiverse. I, I really hope that holds true. Stop <laughs> I'm going to say that out you. It's, just, say that. it's <laughs> so hard to do that right, though. Like I said, CW well, yeah. has done it okay, but there are times where they just oh, they just bowl me over with it. And I'm like, ah, really, guys, come on, can you just get to what's well, happening in front of the characters? Yeah, the other Spider-Man multiverse movie was good for, for for what it was. It was pretty good, but it's not canon, and no, it's a one-off. It was entertaining. Damn it. I'm not saying it's not entertaining. It's a one-off. Yeah, and it's animated. It was, it and was it's nice much more of a kids thing. Oh, man, I don't see it. And kids, <laughs> I was going to it. Say about me. me. Let's talk about the characters. Uh, well, I, Nick Fury is always the best of anything. I'm sorry. Nick Fury does what Nick Fury is supposed to do. Remember, Nick Fury is not supposed to carry any of these movies. No, it's, it's, he's, he's there for a laugh. And it's, it's pretty, it's, he, he's there to be that... Well, it's like in Age of Ultron. He, he's there in that moment to kind of like say the words that put everything in perspective for everybody. What we so gotta do, go do forward. it. He's the one that kind of helps him get past that. My favorite, I have two characters in this movie that I absolutely love. Well, they're not Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man, don't get me wrong. Is it Ned? Love Tom Holland. Of course I love Ned. Okay, I'm like, please, Ned. He's, I love Ned. There's yes. two that really jumped out at me. One was Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. I don't think the villain was fantastic. I think I'll probably like him more as time goes on. But 
his portrayal was really damn good. That's what I'm saying. That's what got me. And as I'm sitting there watching the first half of the movie, especially like the first act, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I know he's the bad guy. Right. I know where this is going, but damn, I want to like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he fits. I mean, I look at him. As soon as I see him pop up in the very first scene of the film, I look at him and I say, damn, he's he's Mysterio. And it it, it, it didn't seem like it was... uh... I almost feel like the chemistry between him and Peter. It seemed like it worked, but to me, it's like you just. To me, it's just like, like there's still something where you you think there's something not quite right about it. But he plays it pretty well. I mean, you can believe he's, you know, maybe just me. The listening to the way he was talking to him made it seem kind of weird. But it's like, well, if you just accept that, hey, he's from the suburb of Earth, and maybe they just talk different. You know, he asked him like, do you guys have sarcasm here? I was like, <laughs> maybe he has just like this different inflection in his voice that makes it seem whatever this other Earth is, and they talk in a different like tone. Or, I mean, you, you're getting at it. it's a different way he was speaking. It seemed like Tom Holland seemed kind of it flowed like that. You think you know it's coming from like a 16 year old kid. And this guy seems like he's got that proper way he talks. And... Despite knowing what I know about what you know, knowing what I knew about what was coming, that he's really a bad guy and all that, I'm watching the first half of the movie and I'm like God I really want him to be the good guy now <laughs> I, I, you, got was, me, you got me sucked in there like, oh, there was part of me that really hoped I was just like well I mean if they've made Venom the anti-hero good guy in a way maybe they can do it with him too because well, Eddie Brock wasn't necessarily a bad guy it's like with Doc Ock he wasn't really a bad guy it's just what he had going on he didn't have a choice to... it was kind of t- both of them were kind of taken over by this Thing. Yeah, and it's clear that there was never a good bone in 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 his body. But, but come on, I mean, the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, I really like Dick Gyllenhaal. I really like Dick Gyllenhaal a lot of stuff I've seen him in. Yeah, yeah, Zodiac yeah, yeah. is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, and I think he was fantastic in that. But like, I kept thinking, what's that one with the, the fucking the spider? What was that shit like? I, can't, I just remember I've I've, I've never, never seen, seen the movie, but like I, I know it's this, like this weird twist at the end, like where he walks in, it's supposed to be his wife. There's this big spiral that like recalls in the back of the room. It's some weird twist in the movie. I don't know what the hell. I don't know. I have to Google it. It has him in it. It's just like one of those like, whoa, what's that about? I, there was some symbolism behind it. I don't know what it was. But uh, yeah, I loved his character. And the other character that I absolutely love, and I know that people have kind of shit on it a little bit because it's not the way that we're used to seeing this character. I love the way that Zendaya is, is, is MJ. She is different. It's different. Huh? We we could have gone back. To, we could have gone back to the red ha- red haired preppy girl, so perfect in every way. The American Mary you know, Poppins, girl like, next door, literally. <laughs> and I think they could have done it and made it work. It would have been the same old stuff, but to make her a little more I don't want to call her emo, just kind of a little more guarded, like really guarded, yeah. sarcastic. I, I think I, like that, is, I, like I think that is a great MJ for what the MCU is doing with Spider Man. Because they work pretty well together. I like their back and forth, especially when she's trying to like Spider Man, right? He's like, uh, no. Yeah. Well, they're dating in real life, so. What? They're dating in real life. Zendaya oh. and Tom Holland, I guess, are a couple. At least I thought I heard that somewhere. Shocker. Uh, but uh, those are the two that really knock me out. I mean, just fantastic. It's very well done. Very well done. And of course, Tom Holland, I haven't quite put him over Tobey Maguire yet. See, we had that discussion with the two guys next to us. Like, Who's your favorite Spider-Man? I'm like, I would say between Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, they both had some good points. I would say I like Tom, I, see, I want to say I like Tom Holland as a more rounded of like, well, Tobey Maguire had this and Andrew Garfield had this. I'm like, I think he balances, Tom Holland balances it pretty well. It's like, I don't know. The other guy seemed the opposite of me. I was like, I think Tobey Maguire made a good Peter Parker. He's like the loser, like nerdy, smart guy. Um, maybe not so much a good Spider-Man, but then like I was Andrew Garfield had like he was a good Spider-Man. He had like that cockiness where he was. It was, it was actually kind of funny, and it, it, it seems like how how Spider-Man would be. And, like he did play the intelligence part pretty well, but I'm like I wouldn't believe that this kid's like you know a, someone who gets picked on a lot. He's the Spider-Man, he's the incarnation of Spider-Man from a lot of the animated stuff in the comics that everybody came to love. The Garfield? No, uh, Tom Holland. Uh, yeah. It's... Because my, my my one real knock on the Sam Raimi to and McGuire stuff is like he's near the end, he's really at the end of high school when we first see him. He goes into college. So he's going into his adulthood as Spider-Man. We're kind of like, well, okay, whatever. 
and, and I love and I well I love the first two. The third one not so much. Uh, <laughs> don't talk about the third one. Yeah, we don't talk about the third one. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, what, was it Venom was it Carnage? Who the hell knows? But I still want to see a Carnage movie. Oh my <laughs> god! But uh, please do it for me. And I liked. The Amazing Spider-Man, the first one with uh, so Andrew those, Garfield. Those are more. I, I like. I like those more. For, I, I know I'm gonna be that person. I'm like, well, he actually made the web shooters, and there are limitations, but they're not. Eh. It's not a mutation where it's like that's cool. I'm like, you don't have to worry about it. That's cool. You can just whip all day. But I like that. Like, it still, it still adds to like his intelligence. That like, yeah, you made all this stuff. And you can do that. That's why I still like Tom Holland because like when he's in the back of the plane building the uh, building the new suit. I kind of got like that. That's why they mirror him. It's like he's like Tony. Like he's intelligent as hell. Well, he can do this on his own. And John Campion has been talking about that a lot. They're trying to make Spider-Man Tony Stark Jr. Yeah, he's and got the intelligence for it. But I, I kind of get it. I don't really want another Tony Stark, another version of Tony Stark. I no one can like, be Tony. Yeah, I'm nobody Tony. can be Tony Stark. Why <laughs> even bother having to try turning somebody else into the next Tony Stark? But. There is a certain something about the character that calls for it, and I think the fact that him and Happy have that talk on the airplane after he gets his ass kicked by Mysterio is that he's saying, "Look, Tony gave this to you. He was. It wasn't just that he want. He didn't say he wants you to put on the suit and be Iron Man. He's saying he wants you to step up and be the guy that he thought you could be. And he even you know, there, there even is a reference at some point in the movie, I think." You, to that line where Tony Stark and him are sitting together after the whole thing with the fairy and uh, Homecoming, he says, "I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be better." Yeah, he's like everything I couldn't be or couldn't because maybe because maybe because Tony understands that there's a shelf life to him to what he's doing. That any day, any adversary that pops up could be it for Tony Stark and Iron Man. I need to know that there's somebody there that can continue to protect these people. They were talking about that in Endgame. He's like, "Look, we're, he's like, look, Captain Marvel, like, you're new blood. We're a bunch of old mules. We just got our asses kicked." Like. Where do we go from here? Well, I mean, I'm, I mean, specifically about the relationship between Tony and and Peter. Is that one of the reasons that he chose Peter? Is he said this is a good guy. This is a kid who really wants to do the right thing. I really want to do the right thing. Even though I've made mistakes, maybe he'll look back on some of the stuff that I've done and not make the mistakes I've made, like making Ultron, doing some of these other things. Maybe he'll maybe he'll learn. Maybe he'll maybe his path will be a lot smoother than mine because he can look back and see some of my experiences. He's every, he's got plenty of intelligence to spare. I mean, so intellectually he could be he could be just as good, just as smart as Tony Stark. And he does want to do him proud. Do he, be right by him. He's certainly motivated. Mm-hmm. I mean, because he definitely sees Tony Stark as a father figure, some kind of mentor. Which is which does fill a hole for his character also because there is no Uncle Ben, there yeah. is no reference to Uncle Ben really. Like There's no hatch. reference to his father. Who the hell knows if they're even going to do anything with that in the next movie or on in whatever Sony and Marvel decide to do. So th- it does kind of fill that void there where we don't have to, you know, the Uncle Ben or uh, Boyd and stuff like that. But so I don't really get down on that as much of the whole making him Iron Man Junior thing. That's that's kind of what Tony wanted, and it so it fits with the way things have gone. That's just my opinion. On that. Now, I love Spider Man. Obviously, I love Spider Man. Ned, come on, you can't go wrong with Ned. No, he never. He gets and they don't overdo it with him either. No, it works just for a little tidbit here and there. It's like after gets trained, he's like, yeah, but dude, getting trained by Nick Fury here the best thing ever. You know? <laughs> so they're you're just gonna get. It's kind of nice to have a little laugh back. You know, Ned's Ned's gonna bring the laughs. Now. The rest of the characters, for the course of the movie, Maria Hill and Nick Fury are basically what they always are. A really damn good team. A really damn good team. Obviously, they're there to kind of keep the shit together from... They're the rear generals to kind of direct everybody. They see the whole battlefield, and they they point everything around. They definitely played that role. I thought it was funny, and we'll talk... And when we get to the post-credits scene, we'll find out why. I thought it was funny that he didn't see... Mysterio coming. He's only got one eye, man. Well, one eye. <laughs> Thank you. I will be here all week. I think it's kind of funny that I he didn't see him coming. Body. Now, it makes sense once you see the po- the first post credit scene. We'll go into that in a minute. But that might have been to me a little bit of telegraphing. Wait a minute. This is because there was a big rumor going around that uh, Nick Fury wasn't actually Nick Fury. That he was. This, after it came out that the multiverse was a thing, there was a rumor that was going around that he's actually a Nick Fury from another mul- part of the multiverse. 
and that he's actually working with Mysterio to do bad stuff. And that so he will die. Some of the bad version of some other version. Some of the bad Superman. I know. Yeah. I know. Like I said, I'm just glad it's not that version. <laughs> I'm just glad it's well, not that you know, How many times has that been beat to death? I'm like, hey, but Superman's bad. Superman, what did you do this time? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Bad kryptonite. The kryptonite was tar in it that, uh, that uh, Richard Pryor made. But uh, still a good movie. It's just a really bad plot point. <laughs> We don't talk about Superman 3 either. Yeah, we don't talk about that either. Or the, the, quest, the quest for Peace. Yeah, yeah we don't four. Yeah. Three and four. Let's not do that. No. But, uh, yeah, it, there's... There was something telegraphed about all that, too. Because even I was kind of wondering. I was like, really? Nick Fury, who's supposed to... I'm How did back he get one so speak. How did one put one past? How did somebody put one past him? Because I, I mean, because as smart as this guy is, as far as a tech is concerned, to make these big holograms and make it look like you know this big cloud thing is trying to eat London. Really, Nick Fury is supposed to be just a little bit smarter than that. You figured there would have been little things along the way that he would have caught, and he just didn't. He wasn't even happy calls, and he still caught the little coded message he was trying to send. Yeah, but uh, I was like, what was it? What? <laughs> Yeah, so it ends up turning out that uh, well, I can, I can go he's not that. actually Nick Fury. I can go into that. Like we'll irony. get to that in just a second. The irony of that whole thing. But ultimately, I did like the characters overall. A uh, little too much Betty and Brant in this. I, I, don't, I don't dislike the chick. I don't dislike the girl playing her. I have no idea who's actually playing Betty Brant. I can look at it real quick. I've got the cast list right here. Well, but again, with, with the kind of piggyback. Quentin Beck, Beck was, was, okay. was the dude's name. But piggyback, it's it works with that. It kind of gives it like an extra little, little funny. That it's just... Oh wow! I'm gonna try this girl's name just so I can butcher it on YouTube. Oh, the girl that plays Betty Brant is Angie Rice. I don't know how to spell that. A N G O U R I E. Angie Rice. That's the best I can say. I probably can. And then uh, Tony Revolori is is Flash Thompson. He's he's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. He's pretty funny. He's probably about the only one of the three people at this at, at this point at the end of this movie don't know that Peter Parker Spider Man. We'll get there too. <laughs> well, that kind of that, now, that makes well. So we yeah, so we get to the end of the movie and as things are getting ready to break loose, MJ figures it out that he's Spider Man. I guess she's Cause had, she knew the whole time. Because she kinda knew the whole time. You know, one of the things I liked about the Sam Raimi Tobey Maguire Spider Man is Aunt May in that movie. It's never expressly said that she knows. Right. I thought about that. But the lady that played that role so brilliantly at times, when she, especially I think it was the it was the second or third one, I forget, there's a scene where she's trying to... Well, actually, there was a scene in the first movie where he's talking about doing something. Uh, I, I think it may have been he was going to try to do something for himself or whatever. And she goes, oh, well, that's not what Spider-Man would do, kind of with a wink. So there were several times over the course of that that trilogy, the Sam Raimi trilogy, where she kind of throws a psychic nod to the audience that she knows, but doesn't tell Peter or anybody word for word, I know you're Spider-Man. It might be like where that, or, I think in the second one, like where he goes and she's like moving out. I don't know if that, because he specifically asks like, hey, where are my comics? She's like, oh, I threw those out. Because like, he looks kind of like, oh, crap. I'm like, well, what did you do, man? Was there something in there that was important? Like, did you see it? Like, maybe she knew. I don't know. She could have been cool that, you know, like you said, just, She's a well, there's a. I know one of the comic storylines. She's actually not only does she know he's Spider Man, and he knows that she knows. She is actually one of the people that maintains the suit for him. All right, which is cool. So. But and I know that you know MJ kind of knew at least at some point in the what was it the first or second one that, that was the, the second one that confirmed that she knew Spider Man. Like, like right when he walks off, like he says yeah. Yeah. she's like, like <gasps> gasp, and then yeah, who am I? Like Spider Man. It cuts it out. Like, and she knows. So. I thought. Let's see, I'm gonna plug. I'm gonna plug that multiverse movie again because you say that because I'm like, well, the thing, the Ant Man, that movie is, is amazing because she takes him on the ground. She's got all the suits there, and she's like, you know, hey guys, pick one, you know. So they do play the Ant Man thing where she has like all the suits, like underneath the house, she's got this big laboratory, like Batman, Batcave looking laboratory with all the suits, and so maybe maybe that's what that was trying to get towards. Yeah, she knows, and she, you know, kind of takes care of all the suits and whatnot. Yeah, I was actually really surprised that they revealed his identity to her at the very end of the first movie. I was like, really? 
I was like, you think that might be something that? Because part of the fun about watching the Spider-Man movies is how he just what he goes through to hide who he really is to the people he cares about. Yeah, like when he or Aunt May. Like when he washed his suit and the thing and turned everything blue. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah an American flag. No one does that. But <laughs> part of the fun is watching him fumble through trying to maintain his secret identity. Yeah, that's the look any superhero. Is. And part of the well, him specifically, and that's part of the fun of watching Peter Parker. Is, is for as great as he is as a hero and for everything that he does, he's still, a kid, he's still like, kind of a bumbling teenager yeah so it's it's one of the things that makes it fun to watch him but yeah I love marissa tomei okay. she's she's a long time celebrity crush for so many well, like i don't like, i don't blame happy yeah i'll blame happy in the least bit <laughs> come on i man. would be happy too but well, especially the last scene of the movie was the best part <laughs> where you we see gotta, we gotta talk about this see peter and he's just like guys you gotta talk about this we can't we can't ignore it anymore and you see him in there in a spider he's got the spider man yeah. suit on you're like you're just you talking about right. and then, then it cuts to the picture of them and goes are right, you guys <laughs> right and he's like oh the, yes no and it's back because they have two different answers i was like that's awesome yeah <laughs> i still see the romance going somewhere it's great though so. because it's not a romance for one of the for, for the hero. It's a romance. For the, it's a romance for these two. It's characters. something that kind of annoys him. Like, dude, we gotta talk about my aunt for real. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta talk about this. It's something that kind of annoys him, but it it can happen in the background, and we can have fun with it. But it's not really gonna impact. Like, like I said, I think that's kind of what the whole point of Ned, uh, his, his girlfriend, girlfriend was about. Like, and it was a nice little like time to kind of cut, not only cut the scene up, move along. She's always like, "Hey, come here." He's like, "Yeah, sure." And then he leaves. But. Uh, now, I was watching John Campy the other day, and somebody had jumped into one of his uh, open mic things, and I don't necessarily consider this a spoiler. There was all kinds of rumors going on that Venom was going to make some kind of appearance this week. Yeah, we're going overcrowded, because that's what happened with three. Okay. That's what Venom in it. Okay. I was, I was worried that Cyclone with the face was going to be Sandman. I'm like, what are we well, doing Sandman in the stereo? Whatever. I... I... <laughs> Not for a second that I think they were going to combine these two things yet. Not going to happen. Uh, for one, think about when this movie was made. This movie was filming while, I'm pretty sure while Venom was probably still in theaters. So they did not yet know how Venom was really going to be perceived. I mean, because while Venom made good money, and while for the most part people liked it, people still knocked on it about a few things. And I really don't think that Kevin Feige would have been like, oh, hey, you guys want to do a Venom movie? Come on over to the MCU. We'll totally do it. And I'm like, it was its own thing. No, it is its own thing. Yeah. As far as as far as anybody knows right now, it's its own thing. Yeah. But I know when they were filming Venom, there was all kinds of stuff going around saying, "Oh, Tom Holland was on set. Tom Holland was on set of Venom. Here's that must be proof that this is just the MCU." And I'm like, "Well, you haven't seen a single frame of footage yet. Let's yeah. wait for the movie to hit theaters, then we'll decide after what they actually give us if we think this might, if there's any hint that this is going to be the MCU." And for one, the San Francisco they show in Venom is very different from the San Francisco that we got in Ant-Man. The cities don't look alike in those two movies at all. I mean, the San Francisco you got in Venom, it, it definitely had more of a futuristic feel. I mean, hell, the, the, the Gotham and Batman Begins and then the Dark Knight, I'm like, to me, they just, for some reason, feel so different. I don't know, maybe it's because of a different tone of the movie or something felt weird, I don't know. To me, the two different Gothams felt like it well, that might weird. that might know. stand out because they're the same character in the same universe and the same it was the same story arc. But, but even being in the same thing, it still felt different. But you're I'm talking right, about man. this movie over here, which isn't supposed to have anything to do with this movie over here. So it makes sense to get, even though they're set in the same city, to have two very different kind of backgrounds, yeah, yeah. two very different kind of tones. I never, for a million years, thought that he was going to be Venom was going to be anywhere near this movie. I was like, there's no way. There's no Kevin. There's no way Kevin Feige, especially after. A positive but sometimes tepid response to Venom was going to rush to get Venom involved in the MCU. Okay, so so some guy gets on John Campy the other day, and I'll show you, and I'll show you the clip later, and says something about Venom not being in this movie, and John Campy wigs out on the fucking guy for a spoiler, and I'm like, well, it's not a spoiler, but it's not a thing. Well, well, it is a thing. I mean, what's not in the movie is just as important as what is. I mean, because if you'd have told me, if you'd have told me a week before Endgame came out that Vision wasn't in Endgame. I'd have been like, dude, really? Because that was one Man, of my questions, is, is if you're bringing people you back, how does, how does Vision but, come back? Yeah. But but it's still a spoiler. But the fact that only, the only people that thought that there was even a chance that Venom was going to have anything to do with this movie at all were the people that desperately, desperately, desperately wanted him to be a part of it, but didn't necessarily have any evidence saying that he would. 
So I'm like, you guys are getting mad because your guys' little dream that you created with you between yourselves online didn't happen. I'm sorry, there's a reason why fans don't write movies. There's a reason why when when Kevin Feige is putting a movie together, he doesn't go to the fans and say, well, what would you like to see? He's like, no, nah, I, I control the story. It's not always the best idea, yeah, and even with like video games, like you don't have to, you don't have to listen to your your audience like to a T. Because Plus, you're not, it, this is the whole problem. You're not gonna please everybody. But you don't. I mean, if it's something that like you know everyone's like, hey, this isn't, you know, this isn't working in the game. Fix that. That's fine. You can't just solely do everything on what what people are telling you. Some some do that, and it's. And it's really annoying that it's being jerked back and forth like that. It was just a week or so ago that, uh, I don't know if you heard this recent quote between that came out, I guess there was an interview with Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal from Sony, where they had mentioned the opportunity, is Venom, and Spider- is Venom going to mix in with this incarnation of Spider-Man? And the response he gave was very interesting. He did not say no. He didn't say yes. <laughs> he did, he did, well, he didn't say, he didn't say yes. But he was like, there are opportunities. Ahead. I forget what the exact quote was. I guess it's like it's but he said, there are opportunities ahead of us. We will look into a lot of things. So he didn't say no. He didn't say yes. But he said, you know what? And what I got from it, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I'm listening to this quote, as I'm saying, as I'm hearing him say, Venom did a lot better than a lot of people thought it would do. Venom did a lot better than we thought it would do. And Maybe. since there's obviously a big fan base out there for that particular character. Maybe at some point, you know, maybe we'll sit down and we'll we'll get a couple of writers together and say, hey, let's let's spend you know a couple hours brainstorming and see what kind of stuff we come up with, and that's what will lead to hopefully eventually Venom coming into the MCU. And... Tom Hardy, man. Now, when I when I saw Venom, I actually saw Venom for the first time fairly recently. I was just well, I haven't actually seen it, so that's you got me on that one. I actually well, didn't see it. I was, I was kind of worried. I was on the fence about it, like it's, like, it's a good movie. All right, it's I've, a good movie. Right. It's it, don't go into it with any expectations of it being in the MCU. It's a good standalone I'm film. Trying to keep Sam Raimi Spider-Man three out of my head. It, yeah, <laughs> I tried it was not a to... way better incarnation of Venom. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like, I know yeah. this has got to be. I better. don't blame Topher Grace for that being a train wreck. I I think that I think that Sony and a lot of the people kind of like really wanted to push that down a, a path where Sam Raimi didn't want to go. Like, and Sam Raimi was like, well, I've got my name on the paper and I got to do this, so I'm just doing what they want. I, I didn't, but, didn't want to see Eric Foreman trying to be, be <laughs> evil. I'm like, I, I didn't can't. mind him. I didn't mind him doing it. Oh, he's a good actor, but I'm just like, but that's the world I was like, oh, God, Eric Foreman, Eric Foreman, I can't. <laughs> I just want to hear have Hyde come and be like, Foreman! <laughs> you know, <dude>. Dumbass. <laughs> yeah, Red, <laughs> Red Foreman, put your ass. Like <laughs> but, uh, but no, he was good. But it's a good movie, and there's little nuggets there. I don't know if they did it intentionally or if they're just they're trying saying. to use some of the background. They mention, even though it happens in San Francisco, they mention that he's from New York. Right. So you so you give him that little New York connection right. and stuff like that. If there's little nuggets that they leave in there, that I mean, obviously he's a reporter, right. so he could very easily find his way back to New York to work for the Daily Bugle. Can we get more uh, J.K. Simmons up in here? <laughs> Poor J.K. Simmons. Always. We'll get to that. We have the post-credits in front. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, so they left little nuggets there that are little doors that you can use to connect these two things. I didn't think it was going to happen in this movie. I think if you thought it was going to happen in this movie, you're too, deranged. Be too soon. Because it's way too soon. I would imagine, if I was Kevin Feige, I would want to see another, I would want to see at least a script for the next for the next Venom movie and say, hey, let me see the story. Let, let me see what you guys are doing with it. Now, I will be more convinced if some people from Marvel bounce over and help Sony with the script for the next Venom movie. If I see that happen... And Sony doesn't do it all in house with their own writers. I might look at it and be like, eh, maybe those guys are going over from Marvel because they want to give them, they want to put a little more connective tissue between the two. Then I would buy that there's a possibility it's going to happen. But right now, I don't see it happening. And the reality is, we still don't know what the hell is happening with Superman. Or with uh, Spider Man, rather. We don't know what's going on with, going on with Spider Man. After this movie, I think that's pretty much it. I think the, the well, deal now is done between Sony and Marvel. I'm sure they're going to work something else out. I'm like, well, that ending, it benefits. Well, yeah, I know. And it benefits everybody for these two to keep working together. And Sony would oh, yeah. be just damn stupid to take Spider Man back all the way. But, we, but there's nothing that's been set in stone yet. And until something's set in stone. 
I'm not gonna hold it up here with gospel truth. Yeah, I still, if you, if you do do this and you do get a venom in there, please. Oh God, give me a carnage, man! I'd love, love to see that. that thing on screen. Well, I, I have a feeling we're gonna be getting carnage. Uh, I've been wanting to see that all the fucking kid. Man. Watch venom. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you've got time, we get done doing this. I'll put venom on. <sighs> <laughs> you tell me something like that. It's 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 like I said, there's stuff in this movie that is really worthwhile. I don't want to go into a whole venom thing, but it's nah, it's, it's it's it had that. holes. It had holes. That. It wasn't fantastic. A good movie though on its own. I mean it wasn't. But uh, <laughs> now let's get to the post credit scenes. Well, the mid credits with the uh... oh shit. <laughs> See, and then it all kind of makes sense. And, and also, my my point here was. Just... Hello. Well, John Campia said that he thought he thought of, that he was almost disappointed that the best part of this movie was the post credit scene. I don't think the post credit scenes are the best part of this no, movie. No, I don't. No, 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 no. These are probably though, with the exception of the post credit scene after the first Avengers film, where you get your first real look at Thanos, where he turns around and smiles at the camera. I think this is probably one of, one of the most significant. When you realize, hardest hitting. You know, like, it, now it doesn't say anything for the broader MCU coming forward. Well, at least the first scene does. The first scene does. The first scene is definitely Spider-Man specific. Yeah. But he's swinging around with MJ, and at this point, MJ knows who the hell he is. And they land somewhere in a street corner in New York. And as soon as they do, it's DailyBugle.com comes up. And I swear to God, this is the point where I saw this. And I, I was sitting there watching the movie with my girlfriend. I didn't have an audible reaction, but I reached over and grabbed her knee, and I squeezed hard enough that, I'm, that she, like, pulled away because I was hurting her. <laughs> J.K. Simmons pops up as J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> now, see, I had a different reaction. I did my best for rock and rock, and I was like, yes! <laughs> I actually clapped. I was like, yes! At that point, I was like, I love you, Kevin Clyde. You're making this happen. You are my shining, right. shining armor. <laughs> and he goes on and on about all this stuff. Now... Two things happened in this in this post credit scene that were absolutely huge. Number one, the reveal of who is J. Jonah Jameson and who else could it really be? Come on. There, there is no one else. Come, Come on, man. on. That was so beautiful. He and, knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing or two. Yeah, he, exactly. Not drones, even. <laughs> it was one of the Stark's drones that flew through somebody's windshield. But, uh, yeah, we cover that. <laughs> we cover that. But not only that, but another very significant thing happens is apparently Quentin Mysterio has somehow edited together some footage that makes Spider-Man look like the bad guy. Yeah, he framed him, and you don't, it's not like you don't think he would have thought something. Because remember, he told him, like, dude, I've got contingencies, and I'm like, I don't doubt that you do. And I'm scared of what that is, and I'm like, well, yeah. You can, well, we, you can edit that to make it seem like Spider-Man his contingency. Is not only does he frame Peter Parker as the one who was doing all this shit to begin with, but he outs Peter Parker, outs Peter Parker as Spider Man yeah. to everybody. It cut out for him like, oh, oh, it's good. And then no, no, he's Peter Parker, and he's like, what? Yeah, I was yeah. like, wow, that is huge. So because what do you do? Yeah, what do you do now, man? And, and in reality, it doesn't just affect Peter Parker and the Spider Man character alone moving forward. That could have, it could. I don't know if it will, but it could have broader implications in the bigger MCU. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I mean. Tony Stark jumped right there and said, I am Iron Man. Yeah. What you can do about it? Yeah. And it didn't seem to cause him any problems. Yeah. Now, Stark has had Happy Hogan to protect him for a, for a long time. Oh, no, so does Peter, though. To that extent, Peter's though? Got, well, no, but I mean, he's got all that stuff Tony does. Now, maybe he doesn't. Like, he's not Tony Stark, but I'm like, oh, he can, it, maybe that's, well, that's my only I thing. get that. I get that, and I could totally see us going to a third Spider-Man movie with him living in some place like Star Tower, or... That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking that's where he could piggyback off. Like, but he's got Tony Stark. But he that just goes that. one step farther towards making him Iron Man Jr. and not the next guy to lead the Avengers against the bad well, guys. He, he can't just be Tony Stark. I mean, isn't that what we kind of want him? It'd be kind of cool to see him doing some Tony Stark-esque stuff. Yeah, but I don't want him to be Iron Man. I want Iron Man to be done. I don't mind him being Spider-Man and being the leader and being the one that Tony passes the torch to and saying, okay, I need you to be the guy who leads this for the, for the next however many years yeah. or films, however you want to look at it. But I don't want him to put on the Iron Man suit and to abandon the Spider-Man persona. I don't want him to become yeah, Iron Man. I, I want him to still be Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. 
So on, on that level, I'm okay with him being the Iron Man Jr., but I'm not okay with him actually putting on the Iron Man suit. I don't want him to become Iron Man. I mean, as Iron much as I love the Iron Spider. The Iron Spider is dope, Absolutely man. my Holy favorite crap. thing about this incarnation of Spider-Man is the Iron Spider. I think it's sweet. But I, I don't know how that affects things going forward. I would be upset if we went into a Spider-Man 3 or to whatever Spider-Man's next appearance in the MCU is, and we find out that he really is just kind of like, okay, whatever, I'm Spider-Man, whatever. Okay. And it doesn't really have an impact on his character because I'm like, well, then why did you have that big reveal in the post credit scene? And he does seem more shocked, like, oh, crap, what do I do? Yeah, he I mean, spent his whole time trying to hide it. Yeah, because why go through that big reveal in the post credit scene only to have it be so inconsequential moving forward? Because, like, yeah, when T Tony started, he's just like, yeah, I'd just screw it, whatever, man, I'm Iron Man. No. It, it, it works for So, J.K. Simmons is back as J. Jonah Jameson. Yes. So happy. So happy. I honestly, that is, that is one of my best favorite parts of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for yeah. making that happen. Uh, the next post, the post credit scene, that was the mid credit scene. The post credit yeah. scene, we realized that Nick Fury was actually not Nick Fury, as we mentioned earlier. He was actually. He was actually a scroll. Not just any scroll. Right. It was, uh, it was the scroll from Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel and his wife. I know they were Kalos, portraying. Like, I keep saying yeah, that's Skyrim. I know his name. I just can't. So, so they were they were the ones that were shape shifting into Maria Hill and and uh, Nick Fury, and they were the ones that were in the movie the whole time. You find out that he, so what he does is he calls Nick Fury. Yeah. He FaceTimes him, and it turns out Nick Fury, wherever the hell he is, whatever the hell he's doing, he's off in space somewhere doing some shit. Doing something. That, to me, definitely leans towards where the broader MCU is going for at least the next phase of films. Yeah, I'm like, that's Nick Fury. That's Nick Fury. Yeah, that's Nick Fury. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. So, it makes sense. Once, whole... they, once they make that reveal that it wasn't actually Nick Fury, the, the real Nick Fury that we, will de we were dealing with throughout the course of this movie, A, it makes sense that Mysterio was able to pull the wool over his eyes a little bit. Yeah. And B, you, you say, wait a minute, Nick Fury is actually out in space? And he's getting some, and he was not like in a small spaceship either. He was no. in a gigantic something that was going on. It's no moon. That's a space it's, station. It's no moon. It's a space station. And Wait, I, I don't know. Gar well, I mean, there's so much going on in space now. You got Guardians. You got Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yeah. Really, anything could happen in space at this point in the MCU. I, so you kind yeah, of wonder what does that mean? Really well, if you think about it in relation to the movies that are coming up in the near future. You've got Black Widow. What is even coming out in your future? Like Black Widow. Right? Wow, what is even coming out in your? They haven't even announced their slate yet. Mm. That's true, because like the only thing that kind of really came after this was Spider Man, and then we're like, okay, yeah, but what else? Are we doing like another Guardians? Are we doing another Black Panther? Another Doctor Strange? I don't know. I'm gonna try to look it up real quick, but I don't think they're gonna announce anything until later this month at Comic Con. Yeah, that's true. I, I like that whole little twist of the scroll for that, because the whole thing of everything isn't what it appears seems to be the whole theme of this movie, that Mysterio is now, he's got this whole wolf pulled over everyone's eyes, he's making this whole thing up. And also, it's like, yeah, but this whole time, that really wasn't an experience. You're like, ah, yeah, you got me again. Not everything is what it, what it seems. I don't know what's even real anymore at this point. Well, BGR.com's got an article up saying mind blowing Spider Man Far From Home credit scene just leaked revealing what's next in what's next in MCU phase four. I don't think it revealed much of anything. No. It definitely revealed that Nick Fury's in space. <laughs> Bitch please, you've been in space. <laughs> Bitch please, you've been in space. That was funny. That was good. I'm really hoping that was actually him and then he pulled the scroll in to do that. Like please tell me that was actual actual Sam Jackson. Or actual Nick Fury. Well, you know, the nice thing is now the scrolls are fully introduced into the MCU. Yeah, uh, Captain Marvel did a good job putting yeah. that in there, and I'm like, ah, see. And yeah. Now they're cool, and now they're working with It is revealed Fury and Hill, and Hill were scrolls, Talos and his wife, while the real Fury was on a scroll ship in space having a VR vacation. If you've seen the movie, you know what we're talking about. It seems like Fury sends in to do his job. What if it ties in with Captain Marvel again? Because, like, can you see, those are pretty cool, you know? They were, First two that kind of met each other, so I don't know if it has something to do with her. Maybe. That's, um, no, maybe there's another Captain Marvel? Something else to follow up on? I don't know how. We, 
left with what's his uh, Jude Law being sent off. And... The final scene also yeah. suggests that Fury and Talos have been in contact for a long time, which makes sense. The, since ever since they met in like the 90s, but Captain Marvel, yeah. Or they began cool interacting now. again after what happened with Thanos. That be equally equally sensible. That's fair. Also, why would Fury trust Skulls more than whatever S.H.I.E.L.D. personnel he'd have available? Well, because well... S.H.I.E.L.D. obviously was infiltrated at one point, so you yeah, don't know who yeah. you can really trust. Yeah. This guy's already proven himself to you. I assume that he's proven multiple himself times. to you multiple times since oh, yeah. the events of Captain Marvel. So, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, Marvel is trying to deceive us with the Multiverse Revelation trailer. I guess where it might not be about the Multiverse at all. Thank God. <laughs> so, I'm getting in love at this point. No. I, bad idea. Bad idea all around. Glad you it's not going to happen. Movie, you aren't. Bad, idea all, <laughs> bad idea all around. Is there anything that connects into the Spider Verse with canon, other than the fact that Spider Man's in it? Multiple Spider Man's in it. <laughs> We're all there. Spider Ham is a real thing, so I don't know. <laughs> Spider Ham was in the Simpsons movie too, wasn't he? Wasn't he the one that caused all the shit that got Homer Simpson in trouble? No, it's game? just he'd make a joke. Spider Pig. <laughs> Homer, Homer Simpson being Homer Simpson. It's not actually. If it was, <laughs> hey, that's you know what? Whatever. Simpson predicted another thing. Okay, but yeah, who the, but I don't even know what the next scheduled release for Marvel is. Yeah, because that was the only thing I thought. The only thing good. filming right now that I know of is the, for some reason, Black Widow movie. Yeah, well, I guess since we kind of killed her off and snapped her out of a stone, maybe we should. I, but do we, we need it? Will I go see it? Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, I'll see it. I'll be there opening weekend. Right. Do I love Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow? Absolutely. Well, Scarlett Johansson, period. Do yeah. I need it? No. I, Does the MCU need it? No. no. It's not that's necessarily. Uh, I, I, I don't know what this movie can offer to the bigger MCU other than just another movie that's going to make $600 million. Just just showing which I guess is enough if you're looking at it from a dollars and cents point of view. But people will see it. It, it gives you. The, anyway, that, that last scene with Nick Fury, it gives you an idea that he's still definitely very much in the mix. But what is he's coming always holding the string, man. I mean, because we're not going to see a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. It won't start shooting until next year. I think late this year at the earliest. Next year. Like, I don't think it'll start shooting until probably next spring. So you're looking at almost a year before it starts to shoot. And please call it As Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. <laughs> Actually, I think uh, Gunn shot that down. He said no As Guardians of the Galaxy. Ah! <laughs> well, we all know who's in charge. He said here. that was just a funny little line. The As Guardians of the Galaxy. Damn. <laughs> but yeah, I. Who knows what's coming at this point? I mean, Black Panthers in heavy pre-production. Doctor Strange, likewise, they're filming a Black Widow movie. Past that, who knows? I know they're working on uh, Shang-Z. Okay, I think I heard that. Uh, and, and some other stuff. I mean, we'll have to find out at Comic-Con here in a few weeks what's going down, because I'm pretty sure the MCU is going to be announcing their Phase 4 slate there. And I That'd know there's been a lot of speculation as to what it's going to be. I'm curious as to what what the overarching story is going to be. I think, and what I hope Marvel is going to do, I think Marvel's kind of put them, they're kind of a victim of their own success in a way. They put themselves in a tough spot where... You got to keep up in it. You, yeah, but how high? How much higher can you up the ante from Endgame? I think, yeah, no. it's, it's like the entire universe. What else are you going to put in like, peril? Like, <laughs> like, yeah. So I think, Avengers level cash I think... Right here. Well, I think what's going to happen is, is instead of having something that stretches over the course of three phases... That phase four is going to be kind of its own contained thing. Maybe like a little tie up to kind of epilogue this whole thing out here. Uh, not necessarily an epilogue for anything that's already happened. I think that's kind of what this movie did, what Far From Home did. It didn't drop the ball. Like, it just kind of was like, this is a nice little fallout. Well, it dealt with the fallout of everything because yeah. even though you can kind of see that you saw people deal with the fallout of the snap in Endgame, yeah. the fallout nice of the entire see. thing overall, not just the snap, but the. The return of all these people, what which is horribly referred to as the blip for some reason in this movie. I was like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not calling it the name I, of stuff, but I still love the snapping, the dusting, the blip. Really, <laughs> you the could have just called it, yeah, the know. snapping. That was the one I liked. But it, it, you, you also in a way, well, a little bit, I mean, if someone just kind of boop, came back in front of you, it's like, oh, well, what would I call that? I don't know. That was actually one of the funnier scenes in the movie for me when it shows all the kids that were the band thing and the gym, <laughs> like, dusting, oh and then they're like, and then they came back five years later. They're in the middle of a basketball game and like they just kind of like poof back in like, hey. and like they run into each other and just destroy each other. But uh, yeah, this 
it dealt really well with the aftermath, not just everybody disappearing, but everybody coming back. You know, what was happening. And there was and there was some little things happening in the background. A guy said, "Yeah, I disappeared back in my house, and my wife was married to another guy." And yeah. Yeah. On that. And it even reveals that May had had gotten dusted. You know, they didn't it because because she even mentioned something early in the movie when they're at that uh, that event where he's up there giving the yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, she's right. like, I showed up back in my house and the couple that lived there back in my apartment, the couple that lived there lost their mind. So even they dusted. It tells you that pretty much everybody who is significant to Spider-Man's particular story dusted. Mm-hmm. Flash, uh, Mary Jane, Betty, uh, Betty Bryant. Ned, Ned. All, all of his circle of friends dusted, which I find kind of peculiar. I'm just like, eh, I'll let it go. Well, it's, well, the like, odds of at least one or two of those people surviving the dusting and being out of high school by now makes a lot more sense. Well, I mean, why but, did everyone in the Guardians die except for Rocket? It's like, oh, poor guy, he lost everybody. Because that's the way it was written. <laughs> that's, that's my only real answer. But, yeah, it, it did really good at kind of dealing with the aftermath of the entire event, not just the dusting. It, it did kind of respond to some of those things. Where they go from here, who the hell knows? I, I, like I said, I can see Marvel kind of just doing individual phases as their own stories, their own overlapping thing over a couple of films, as opposed to another 22 films before we go <laughs> We don't want to do this again. Unless, and this is always out there, because who the hell knows? They've got Galactus now. And if you really want to go after another Thanos-level bad guy that's, you want to go there, that's going to have to be dealt with over 22 films, go Galactus is the guy. Did you ever see the, uh, oh, I showed you the, uh, oh, the fake thing? Galactus fake thing? I was like, awesome. hey, man, that's cool. <laughs> that was cool. He just like, like, yep, this is mine now. It I'm was like, oh. awesome. I, 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 when I first saw it, I found myself kind of bummed it was fake. I was like, God, that would have been awesome. That would have been, been a nice twist. And then, like, you think going to that one. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. That. Anyway, final thoughts. Give us a, give us a rating. Are we, like, a hat or something? Or? Uh, stars. Let's go four stars. Four stars were great. Five stars. That's Let's fun. go five, then. I like even numbers. Let's go five. Out of five stars, how many do you give it? Well, it's usually at four. I'm like, four, four is a good. Uh, it's not perfect, but I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was very well done. Like I said, Jake Gyllenhaal was pretty damn good, even me knowing what happened, and I guess my mom didn't know that, so it, it got her. She just leaned over to me, like, what the hell is that? I'm like, he's not a good guy, man. I'm like, what? And then she's like into it. I'm like, yeah, great. Uh, the whole illusion thing was good. Like I said, even after... It was a nice follow-up, and I, there was something I noticed that was really cool in that line that you see in the trailer and in the movie. He says, everywhere I go, I see uh, Tony Stark's face. I'm like, you notice in some of those scenes like where they come back in, there's a, a spray tag or a sign or something with Iron Man in those scenes. It's like, yeah, you literally just seen him everywhere. It's, oh, yeah, I, I noticed it as he was on the flight to Europe. It's like he's scheming through uh, whatever streaming service and it's like Tony Stark the story oh, of, the hero, the the life of a hero the one that's in Finding Wakanda got me <laughs> I, I looked at that and I'm like oh my god there's Finding Wakanda I want to see that movie and it was like one about Tony Stark right so it, it's like he literally can't, can't escape it it, yeah, was, I, it was a nice nice follow up to like see where just for Peter the one who was probably the I guess the closest to Tony or probably the most affected by it because Again, people on the internet like to ruin my day, and you're like, yeah, with his spider sense, you know, he probably would have sensed Tony was dying. I'm like, don't, don't, don't do that to me. Don't. I know he knows he's dying. That's probably killing him even more. But he knows he's not going to make it. I, Patrick just came back, too. Like, damn, he just came back, and then they had to, sw- you know, they had to flop there for a second. He had to watch uh, Tony die. Well, that's part of the growth of the character, too. Yeah, it, that's, well, I mean, hell, man, he lost his damn, his uncle, and then he lost the only other father figure he had, like he said, and... That's, that's really gonna weigh on that kid. Yeah, you never know. Maybe, maybe happy looking with Uncle. <laughs> happy. That's where we're going anyway. Let's face it. I mean, the whole the whole thing there. We're gonna ship. We're gonna ship Ant Man. Happy. <laughs> sure. That's fine. fine. Yeah, I had a five star solid four. I, a I great a great follow up to Endgame. Like I said, you, there was still some residual stuff that you dealt with from the snap. I think it dealt with it well. At the same time, it managed to push Spider Man and Peter Parker to push their story down the line really well. I'm not entirely fond of so many people knowing his identity before the post credit, before the mid credit scene. Uh, Aunt May knowing was one thing, Ned knowing was one thing, MJ. but now MJ knowing, he, it was one of my big knocks on the Arrowverse. It's like, everybody fucking knows. <laughs> These are, uh, it's like every watching. couple episodes, there's one more person that finds out. It's like, my God, you're not even secret anymore. Just come out and say, hey, I'm whoever. But 
it hasn't caught it hasn't quite gotten to that, but we haven't gotten to the Tony Stark levels of knowing the yeah. Batman. But uh, like I said, solid movie overall. Post credit scenes were just glorious. I will for honestly, I would buy another ticket at regular price just to go in there and watch the JJ thing as pop up on the screen again. Worth it. That that post credit scene right there was worth the price of admission. It's like, like I had what do you call it? Is this Peter Tingle? I had little, <laughs> I, I had Tingle. Like I was very <laughs> like, I want to see Spider Man. I'm like I'm hearing it from like you know when I was a kid when he was in the. Same Raimi movies. I'm like, oh my god, this oh is amazing. God, like, how have we not brought up Peter Tingle yet? God, that's a, that is <laughs> one sorry. of those things that is going to go on. It's like the I love you three thousand thing. Mm-hmm. Got that, Peter, that's that's, that's going to carry through the through the MCU. Because <laughs> like, it's not like he's, like he's happy just knew about it. Like, like well, of course <laughs> I know he's with his aunt, who apparently coined this term, the Peter Tingle. <laughs> oh man, that's got so much opportunity to be. Uh, <laughs> internet, internet, do your thing, please. Oh, my Get memes out there now. Let the memes begin. <laughs> Give me your best Peter Tingle quotes in the comments, for God's sake. I need them. <laughs> oh, I need them. Tag me on Twitter. I love Peter Tingle 3000. That's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, don't, don't yeah. go to 11. Go to 3000. <laughs> Solid movie overall. Uh, if if you haven't seen it, go see it. No, we, I mean, we spoiled everything for you. Well, we told you what it was about. Yeah, we told you. You knew it was. You should have already seen it by this point. Jesus. But uh, yeah, great movie. I'm gonna go see it at least one or two more times. I've. I should. My yeah. original plan today was a double header. I was gonna hit Endgame and then this. I kind of did. Like I said, I saw Endgame one day and the next day did Alan Tudor. So it was nice to kind of put them together. Yeah, my original, them that way was nice. Yeah, my original plan was an Endgame Spider-Man double header. That didn't work out because when I said. Fall because of rain. Cause, no, because when I said, "Hey, honey, go, go online and get tickets to go see Spider-Man tomorrow." I didn't think that you would get tickets to an eleven thirty showing. I was like, well, damn. I guess there's not a whole lot of seven thirty showings of Endgame. <laughs> That's kind of the time frame I would need. Everyone's like, well, it's still three like, hours long. But only four seats take for the Endgame. Well, I'm like, yeah, well, it is Monday night. Everyone's already seen it. They're probably not going to go anyway. Oh, yeah. but I got lucky. With that. I didn't really care. Yeah. I just wanted to see it again. But yeah, that's us. That's us talking about spoilers for uh, for Spider Man Far From Home. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, go do all the stuff that people ask you to do on. YouTube share like whatever because God knows that YouTube isn't doing anything to help small creators anymore. And uh, hope you guys dug the movie. Hope you guys dig us. We'll see you guys later.